How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be covering a really handy new tool which can help you enhance the efficiency of your CPU, getting you slightly better FPS, lowering power usage and lowering the temperature of your Ryzen CPU. And in my opinion this is one of if not the most important optimization you can quickly and easily apply. In the method we're going to be covering in today's video we're going to be doing it all in software so you don't have to worry about fiddling around in the BIOS, trying out tons of different settings and you can adjust the settings on the fly within a few seconds at any time on your PC. Setting up PBO correctly for your CPU will allow you to get slightly better FPS, but more importantly, reduce temperatures drastically and reduce power draw from the CPU, allowing your CPU to boost higher and for longer, resulting in better and more stable gaming performance, saving money on your energy bills, keeping your PC cooler for longer, allowing for better performance for longer, and it's just a win-win-win setup. It's incredibly quick, simple, and easy to set up on nearly all CPUs, with all that and more coming after a quick message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. So to kick things off, if you're running on a 5000 or 7000 series Ryzen CPU, you're more than likely good to go. The only time this will not work on your current system is if you are utilizing an A series motherboard, whether it be an A320, A520, or A620 motherboard. To see which motherboard you are using, simply navigate to the bottom left hand side, simply type DX Diag, then select Run. Underneath System, navigate down to where it says System Model. You're more than likely going to see a letter and three numbers after it, and that will be the chipset for the motherboard in which you are using. But if you see a B or an X series motherboard, you're good to go. But in the small circumstances where your system model isn't just a letter and three numbers, like mine here, simply head over to Google and type the system model. So for me, that was MS-7D13. For me, it's coming up as a B550, and I'm seeing about four links that are all saying it's a B550. So for me, that's completely good to go, and I'm ready to use PBO. We're going to be utilizing PBO Tuner for this video. PBO Tuner is a fantastic, free, and simple to use piece of software in which can be utilized on nearly all Ryzen CPUs. It makes for an incredibly easy undervolting experience if you're not wanting to dive into the Ryzen Master software or fiddle around in the BIOS, potentially setting up system parameters which you'll then have to reset by doing tedious tasks like resetting the CMOS by either taking out the battery or resetting it on the back of your motherboard if you're lucky enough to have a button. This way we can simply set the software with inside of Windows, we can change it on the fly if you want to make it more aggressive or less aggressive, and in my opinion this just makes the whole experience way easier and more user friendly. In this guide I'm going to be showcasing this on two of my systems, one is utilizing a B450 motherboard and a Ryzen 5 5600, not even the X variant, and the other system is utilizing a B550 motherboard with the Ryzen 5800X3D. There is a full written guide on how to utilize PBO2 tuner, especially for the 5800X3D, found on Prime O0's GitHub. Inside of here you can read a full written guide on how to go through absolutely everything, but in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily set this up for your system. To find and download PBO2 tuner, I'd recommend simply googling Prime O7 PBO2 tuner. Once you do a quick Google search for this, navigate down to the GitHub link, double check the URL to actually make sure that you are exactly on Prime 07's GitHub. 07 and not 07, that is the letter O. Once inside of it, all you then simply need to do is scroll down towards the middle section until you find the debug-cli.70. Once inside of it, navigate down to the Google Drive and download the file. Go to the top right, click download. What you then need to do is go show in folder. Then all you need to do is open up the 7-zip. I like to use 7-zip for this, then open archive. Here you can either drag the debug folder out and put it anywhere on your PC, or double click and drag the files out themselves and put it inside of your own folder. Double click on the folder, you'll then be met with the pbo2tuner.exe. When pbo2tuner opens up, you may have more or less core options with inside of here. What I would then recommend that you do before undervolting your CPU is quickly run some base tests at your stock settings. As always, when undervolting or overclocking your system, you are doing so at your own risk. PBO2 Tuner is an incredibly safe and easy way to apply this, and the methods we're going to be covering in this video should be able to be applied for absolutely everyone, but by all means, please do not go in and start setting up incredibly crazy settings unless you really know what you're doing. We're going to be utilizing this to apply a very basic undervolt to the CPU, do a quick Google search for Cinebench, navigate down to one of the download links. Next up is HW Monitor or Hardware Monitor. Navigate over to Google, search for HW Monitor, navigate down to CPUID.com. Once inside of here, scroll down towards the middle section where you can find either the setup or the zip. Select the version you're going to be going with, I'll use the setup, navigate down to download now, once downloaded, select open. Hit next, 
next, yes, next, and install. Once completed, select finish. Alternatively, if you don't want to make use of HW Monitor for this, you can also use HW Info 64. That's a fantastic alternative program. They both do the exact same thing. You can use either program as they will both work fantastically, but for the purpose of this video, I will be making use of HW Monitor. Last but not least, for those of you looking to do some stress testing on your system, both before and after, if you're super serious about getting the most stable system possible, a fantastic and free software which I would highly recommend using if you want to do this is OCCT. Next up, we then need to run our base test. So for this, navigate to the bottom left, make sure the hardware monitor or HW Info 64 is open. Once inside of the program, I would first of all recommend selecting the drop down menu to minimize all of the other pieces of hardware on your system with inside of here besides your CPU. Just makes the UI way cleaner so we can focus in on all of the information we're actually needing for this video. Inside of here, you can see all information regarding your CPU. We're mainly going to be taking a look at the CPU package temperature, the CPU package power in watts, and the core clocks. Once you're familiar with all of the numbers you're looking at for your system, drag this over to the right hand side. We can then open up Cinnabon. What you then need to do is navigate to the top left hand side to file, then select advanced benchmark. You'll then be able to change the minimum test duration to off, as we only want to do single runs of Cinnabench for now. At this point we can then run our stock test to see what our stock performance is like. Head over to the CPU multi-core test, then select start. We can then take ourselves over to the right hand side to take a look at some of the numbers during the test. As you can see currently for me, I'm utilizing about 115 watts currently under this test. You can see that my CPU core clocks are about 4224 megahertz, which is quite under what this CPU is capable of. And last but not least, you can see at the top we're reaching about 78 degrees and climbing. Once your initial Cinebench test has finished, don't pay too much attention to what your current score is or any of the numbers, as we're only really going to be using these numbers as a comparison at the end of the video once you've completely dialed in your undervolt. With that completed and out of the way, we can now dial in our first undervolt. What we can do is keep these applications running, but just minimize them down. Open up the PBO2 folder you created, then go ahead and double click on PBO Tuner. You may see more or less cores depending on what CPU you have installed to your system. What we need to do is start off by applying an undervolt of minus 10, as this should work perfectly fine on most systems. So head over to core one, hit minus and 10. To make this super quick, what I like to do is highlight this, right click, select copy. Then all I do is select control and V on my keyboard, highlight over the next core and just simply paste this in quickly and easily. So we're applying minus 10 to all of the cores in our system. To apply the undervolt, go to the bottom right, select apply. So with the undervolt applied, minimize the program, but keep it open. Head back into Cinebench, open Hardware Info 64. This time head over to the top left, once again to CPU Multicore select start. Instantly on the right hand side throughout this test you can see I've managed to gain about 100 megahertz on all of the cores throughout this test. That's instantly telling me that I'm going to be able to achieve a higher Cinebench score. You can see that my CPU package power has gone up ever so slightly. This is normal for such a small undervolt as the CPU is now able to push itself further as we've been able to loosen up some of those restrictions with our undervolt. So don't pay too much attention to the temperature or the package power here. We're mainly just wanting to see if Cinebench actually passes. As you can see on the left hand side we've been able to achieve about a 400 point increase which is fantastic and and more importantly, we were able to pass the test. So what we now need to do is minimize out, open up PBO Tuner once again, and we're then going to increase our undervolt by five. So go from minus 10 to minus 15. Once again, select copy, copy this to all of the cores. With minus 15, go down to the bottom, select apply. Once it's applied, open up Cinebench once again. Head over to the left-hand side and select start. As you can now see, we we're able to achieve about 25 megahertz more on all of the CPU cores, with some of the CPU cores even stretching to 4.4 gigahertz. And there we go, minus 15 has been completed. We were able to achieve about 200 extra points on the score, which is great, without any further power usage. This time we're going to increase it by another five, up to 20. When running minus 20, this is where some CPUs will start to drop off and become unstable. It's completely fine if you do crash, don't panic. Your system will just simply restart back into Windows and nothing will be applied. All of your settings will be completely default and you won't be running the undervolt. With minus 20 applied, go to the bottom, select apply, and once again, head into Cinebench, run the test. Repeat this step until your PC eventually crashes, or if you're able to run minus 30 and minus 30, doesn't crash and you're able to complete the Cinebench run, that's also great. When attempting to try minus 30 on my system, unfortunately it did crash. So it seems as if minus 25 might be the sweet spot for my CPU. What I would then recommend that you do wherever you crash, even if it's at minus 10, add five back to the number and where you crashed. So for me, I crashed at 30. So I'm going to go back to 25 as that was previously stable for me. Again, this number could be completely different for you. Once you've applied the curve optimizer back to the previously stable state, what we then need to do is navigate back into Cinebench. We're now going to do a longer stress test just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke when we originally passed Cinebench on this setting. So go to the minimum test duration and in all honesty I would set this to 10 minutes. Go to the top left and start the multi-core test. We aren't necessarily going to be monitoring the temperatures or the voltage within inside of this test, we just want to make sure that it actually passes to see if it's actually stable. If unfortunately it isn't able to pass a 10 minute test, I would set this back to 20 on all cores, apply and run the 10 minute Cinebench test again. If you're able to pass a 10 minute Cinebench test,
test, that's a good indication that your undervolt is more than likely stable. If you then want to go into further stress tests, I would highly recommend downloading and utilizing OCCT and using some of the stress tests available in that software. If you can pass them, fantastic. If at that point you are still confident that your undervolt is stable for your system, it's now time to do the most important testing, which is real world testing for how you use your system. Boot into some of your favorite games, whether it be competitive, high fidelity, single player, multiplayer, play some of your favorite games and see what your performance is like. Alongside that, we then need to test the CPU at idle. Close out of all the programs and leave your system idling at the desktop for a little while. If it's stable and doesn't crash, fantastic. Do some like web browsing, watch some YouTube videos. If you do run into any hiccups or crashes, just simply dial the undervolt back by five. So for me, if I run into any hiccups or I did crash when gaming, I would set this to 20 on all cores and try that. And at that point, you should then be good to go and be undervolted on your system. If at any point when your system is booted, you want to turn off the undervolt, it's as simple as navigating into the PBO2 tuner, heading down to reset, then selecting apply. That's it. All of your system settings have been set back to the default values. You can then close out the application if you want to. All of your system settings are set back to the stock values as if you never changed anything. Moving past this, you could then look to apply the curve optimizations in your system BIOS, so you can set it and forget it forever and constantly be running the undervolt in your system. Or alternatively, you could actually set up the program inside of Task Scheduler with inside of Windows to have the PBO2 tuner program open up automatically with your settings already set every single time you boot Windows. For me personally, I would not recommend doing this. If it's summer or winter or the ambient temperature changes with inside of the environment you're playing in can all drastically change the performance of your CPU and how hot or how cool it gets. So my personal recommendation would just be to use the PBO2 tuner application every single time you log into Windows. Once you know the stable numbers for your undervolt, it takes literally 10 seconds to set up when you log in, input the numbers, go down to apply, minimize the program, you're then good to go. You can leave your PC on for days on end, as long as the application is open in the background, it's undervolting your CPU. But if for some reason you really do just want to have this automatically open on your system, you are doing so at your own risk, just head down to step six in the written guide, which will show you all of the steps necessary to have set up on your system to have this open automatically. But again, I would not recommend this personally. For both my 5800X3D and my Ryzen 5 5600, both systems seem to be completely stable at minus 25, but both seem to crash at minus 30. Your undervolt might be able to go all the way up to minus 30, might only be able to go from minus five or minus 10. It really comes down to luck of the draw. On screen now, you can see some quick benchmarks from both my systems, both before and after in terms of the power draw, the FPS numbers, and everything you need to know on multiple games. And there you guys have it. Let me know which CPU you've applied this to and how far you were able to push your curve optimizer and what results you've seen from doing that. It's fantastic to get a discussion going on and it's great to see your guys' results. If you have enjoyed this sort of content and want to get even more out of your system, I would highly recommend checking out the two videos on screen now and I'll see you guys over there.